So good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Xu Li, and uh, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the uh, University of Nebraska-Lincoln. So uh, Amy and Carlton did a great job kind of giving out the background of antimicrobial resistance and some general overviews of manure treatment. So here I'll talk about uh, the results from a specific study that look at the, the influence of setback distance on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance genes uh, in the runoff and soil following the land application of the uh, swine manure. So here this plot shows the, uh, the general pathways of uh, antibiotics and antimicrobial resist antibiotic resistance genes um, in the agro environment. So after the animal discharged the waste uh, that contains antibiotics and antimicrobial antibiotic resistance genes, after a certain amount of uh, storage and treatment times, they will be uh, land applied into cropland. Those antibiotics and resistance genes will naturally degrade it to some extent. The ones that uh, tend to persist may eventually end up, end up in soil and contaminate the food crops grow in soil. And they may also end up in the nearby water bodies through uh, agricultural runoff. So over the years, we have looked at different manure management practices land application practices and see how they may affect the transport of antibiotics and antibiotic resistance genes in the cropland. So we look at different land application methods as well as the timing of land, manure land application relative to, to rainfall events, how they may affect the concentration of antibiotics and ARG in the runoff. Uh, we also look at the effectiveness of vegetative barriers. Uh, in today's talk, we're going we're gonna to report the uh, finding from the setback distance study. So setback distance is the distance between the area where manure is land applied to a sensitive water bodies. So this is uh, an infograph that was, uh, um, that was made by the UNL extension and talk about the manure setback distances for large animal operating facilities, it is required that where the manure is land applied or where the manure stockpile is, one needs to be, needs to be at least 100 feet from, um, from a surface water, wells, or open tile lines. Or if there is a vegetative barrier, then the distance that has to be, needs to be 35 feet. For small or medium operations, uh, the setback distance requirement is about 30 feet. A lot of this setback distance requirement was established based on nutrients and pathogens. There hasn't been a study particularly look at how the setback distances affect the concentration of antibiotics and antibiotic resistance genes uh, in the runoff. So the objective for this particular study is to determine the setback distances needed to minimize the contamination of surface water from manure-borne antibiotic and antibiotic resistance genes, or ARGs. So this particular study was conducted in the summer of 2016. The field plot was established at the UNL Rogers Memorial Farm. The, 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 the study site has a 4.9% slope and is uniformly covered with crop residuals. The soil type is uh, oxabin silty clay loam. So we have both amended plots and control plots. So the, the figure on the right hand side shows kind of the layout of the plot. For each plot at the top, there will be a region we call the manure region. For amended plot, the swine manure that collected from a southeast, southeast Nebraska swine facility was land applied. For a control plot, there's no manure land applied. And then there's also within each plot, there is a setback region. Uh, with Different plot would have different setback distances from zero to 13.3 meter. So we used a, a randomized complete block design in the field. There are a total of four blocks. Each block has one of the plot with the one particular setback distance. So in other words, for each setback distance, we have four replicate plot. So that would allow us to, that allowed us to do some st statistic analysis on the, res on the, on the final finding. So we conducted two rainfall simulations. 
Uh, the first rainfall simulation was conducted one day after the swine manure is land applied. And the second rainfall simulation was conducted one day after the first rainfall. Because there's only 24 hours apart between the land application of manure and the first rainfall simulation, we're kind of studying a, a nearly worst case scenario in terms of contaminant loads in the runoff. So this is what a plot looked like in the field. So at the top of the plot, that's the manure region. And then at the end of the plot, at the end of the setback region, we have a trough that can collect uh, runoff and then be channeled into a container where we collect the samples for, for analysis. And five days after the second rainfall simulation, we went to the plot and collected soil samples. So those are the antibiotics and antibiotic resistance genes that we included in the study. We included four antibiotics, chlorotetracycline, lincomycin, penicillin, and tiramulin in the study, based on the information we got from the facility operator. And then for each antibiotics, we have three or four, we have a, some resistance genes. For tetracycline, we have T, T, D, O, Q, and X to um, we'll have, resist, have those four resistance genes. We also included the 16S rRNA gene. That is the gene that all the bacteria contains. So we usually use this gene to represent the old, to quantify the, the size of the overall bacterial community. We also included the INTI1 or the class one integrant integrase gene. So this gene is involved in a lot of horizontal gene transfer where the ARG in one bacteria can be transferred into another bacteria. So the presence of this gene is an indication of a potential horizontal, horizontal gene transfer of ARG between bacteria. So here we did uh, some statistic analysis. I'm showing the results for one of the genes first. So we have this five setback distances and I want to draw your attention to this p-values. So if the p-value for a particular gene is lower than 0.05, we consider setback distance have a significant impact on its concentration in the runoff. So those values with the different setback distances means the concentration of this 16S RNA gene in the runoff from a, set, from a plot with a setback distance of zero meter, three meter, or six meter. So we did the same kind of analysis for all 10 genes that were included in the study. So out of the 10 P values, and we found Seven of those has a p, seven of the 10 genes has a p value smaller than 0.05, meaning those seven genes, the concentration of those seven genes in the runoff are significantly impacted by increasing setback distance. To better visualize it, we have this plot. So the y axis is the log concentration of three of the resistance genes, three of the tetracycline resistance genes, and the x axis our difference are increasing setback distances. And we found the linear regression can describe the, the field data relatively well. We thought the linear regression is important methods because this way um, our field studies can only test the setback distance up to 18 meters. But with the linear regression, we can predict the concentration of those genes at a longer setback distance that we cannot test in the field. We also did a similar analysis on the chemicals. So out of the four antibiotics we tested, uh, three of them consistently detected in the runoff. Those are chlorotetracycline, lincomycin, and tiamulin. And the log concentration of those three antibiotics also follow a linear, linear trend with the setback distance. So here is the table kind of summarized the gene, all the gene data and the antibiotic data. I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the 16S RNA gene as an example first. So the linear, the linear equation that we developed for this particular gene is this, is this equation here that has a relatively high R square value. Use, and because in the field, in addition to the amended plot, we also have the control plot where manure is not land applied. So we quantify the concentration of this gene in the runoff from the control plot and see what is the setback distance needed in order for us to have the concentration of this gene fall back to the background level, Sim the same as, the control, the, same as the, um, the control plot. So the finding is it requires 43 meters or 141 feet for, for the setback distance 
to have a concentration of this gene in the runoff drawback to the same level as the control plot. And we have, we did a similar analysis with the other genes and antibiotics. So for the seven genes we tested, the setback distance ranged from 36 meters to 50, 58 meters, or 118 feet to 190 feet. So if this is the manure constituents we want to control using setback distance, then the setback distance needs to be set uh, around 58 meters to to minimize the impact of those genes. And it's a similar case for the three antibiotics. The, uh, it's ranging from 37 meters to 66 meters. So one limitation with this method is we can only test one gene at a time. Uh, there are many different kinds of resistance genes that occur in the livestock waste. So after this analysis, we did another analysis using a new method is called microfluidic qPCR method. Using this method, we can look at more than 140 genes at a time. So in this plot, in this heat, heat map, all the y-axis is each one of those 100, 140-ish genes. They are classified into different families. So the, the, they're, they're kind of color-coded. The bluish color are the, all the amino glycoside resistance genes. And then the purplish is the older beta lactam resistance genes. And each, the, the color here in the heat plot, uh, the more reddish color means the higher concentration of that particular gene. And the yellowish color is the lower concentration. If it's a gray color, that means that that gene was not detected. And if you look at the x-axis, we have the first column being the runoff from the control column, where there are not a whole lot of resistance genes and the concentration level is usually low. And then the other columns are the runoff from, from the, uh, the mended plot with different setback distances. We can see both the abundance and the diversity of those resistant genes are significantly increased, uh, significantly higher uh, in the runoff from the mended plot. So this one shows the different kind of uh, classes of antibiotic, antibiotic resistance genes in different samples. So the one on the left are the ones from are the resistant genes from the runoff in, uh, in the runoff from the control column, from the control plots. So most of the genes are either MDR, multi-drug resistance efflux genes, or the MGE as mobile genetic elements. The INTI1 gene that we looked at earlier belongs to this group of genes. And we see there is a little bit of tetracycline and MLSB genes in the runoff from the control plot, whereas the composition of the resistance genes from the mended plot are significantly different. We can see the tetracycline classes of resistance genes and also the uh, MLSB, which is the green bars that including the lincosamide resistance genes are significantly higher from those amended plots. So we try to use that information to get an, another estimate on what's the setback distance needed for the, for the um, for the, for the field. So each color in the heat map represents a concentration of resistant genes. So we add each one of the number together, we can get one number for the runoff concentration for one particular setback distance. And that is what we plotted here. So we can see as the setback distance increases, the total amount of a resistance genes concentration decreased. The red dot is the concentration of total resistance genes from the control plot. And we did a similar analysis using regression methods to see what would be the setback distance needed in order for the green dot drop to a level similar to the red dot. And that finding is also around 45 meter or so. So that is within the range that we, used, we, we found um, with, the, with, the, uh, with the earlier analysis. And this is a heat map showing the ARG concentration in the soil. So the labels are the same, it's the same as the previous heat map and so, same as the color code. The Y axis here, the first one is, the first column represents the soil before manure application. And the second column means the soil, the, the, the resistome in soil after the manure application. We can see the manure application did increase the abundance and diversity of the resistance genes uh, in the soil. And then those are the soil samples collected 
from the from different setback distances, we can see there is a not significant changes in the soil resistance in the setback region despite the manure application. Again, this part showing the composition of resistance genes in the different soil samples. This is the one that's the composition in the original soil. And the second column is the composition of the resistant genes after the manure application. The manure application significantly changed the composition of the resistance, uh, changed the, the composition of the resistant profiles. Whereas for the, for the soil in the setback distance, they're largely the same as the original soil. It was not significantly impacted by, by the manure application. So the summary of this study, the setback distance, it turns out to be an effective means to control the transport of antibiotics and ARGs in the agricultural runoff. And if we consider both antibiotics and ARG, we consider for the, uh, um, the, in, the environmental condition that we tested a setback distance of 65 meters or 213 feet is deemed necessary to limit the transport of antibiotics and ARGs in the runoff. And also for the soil resistance, the setback region is minimally impacted by the manure application um, in the manure region of the plot. So this work was um, sponsored by um, the National Pork Board. Um, Amy, um, is also on the project. We also have colleagues, uh, Shannon Bertelt Hunt and Dan Snow from, from UNL, and then Dr. John Gilly from the USDA on the project. And we have two graduate students who have been working on the, on the project. And with that, thank you for, for your attention. I also have my contact email address on the slides.